Good morning. I am out here on the patio having some coffee and I thought I would just give you a little tour of this gardening space. Um, I don't show it a whole lot because, um, you know, we're just up here like girly girl likes to have her, her uh, chalk and toys and stuff. Um, but I have a few things happening. I have a hay rack. I just moved the green stock up here. So I'll show you how that's doing um, and kind of show you what I'm I'm growing. So this is actually right off of our kitchen because we live in a townhouse. So our kitchen's on the second story, which I know is kind of um, different, but uh, this upstairs patio is, is right off of the kitchen. And so I have a lot of herbs. I've really focused on herbs in the hay racks and they do really well. So for reference, the garden, which is looking lovely. We just got a little bit of rain last night is down there. And then we are up here on the patio and so i have focused on herbs because when you're just cooking and you want to run out and grab you know some herbs for the kitchen it's really really handy to just have them and they grow well in the hay racks hay racks with these kind of cocoa fiber um, liners have tons and tons of drainage and so it can be a little hard because they do dry out quickly but i find that herbs don't typically mind that at all so i have this really pretty variegated thyme which has been kind of fun you know these are decorative as well as practical planters um so it's fun to have varieties that are like a little bit just decorative and pretty i'll see if i can remember the name of this thyme. i'm forgetting it right now but it's a really pretty little variegated thyme and um, just super nice for culinary use as well. Then we have the zinnias. Um, if you hear a girly girl in the background, she's out here with me. Um, and these are these are lily put zinnias, so they're supposed to only be about eight to 10 inches tall, but I did plant them in right with all of these herbs. And I think because the herb roots are so intense, they've gotten pretty stunted, but they're kind of just adorable. I love like teeny tiny little zinnias really pretty. I had a pansy here. I just pulled it out. Um, it lasted all the way into basically July, which is so shocking. There's a Swiss chard that I planted this spring. It's starting to grow up. And now that the pansy's gone, I think it'll have a little bit more space. This is winter savory. So this is a perennial, really nice herb. If you've never used winter savory before, um, I kind of use it like I would oregano. It's definitely got very much of like an oregano flavor. Um, and it's really good for use with that or like with chicken um i throw it into tomato sauces and stuff too so beautiful beautiful it turns kind of a purple in the winter and then gets this really pretty green flush in the summer then i have a purple sage and this is for my thanksgiving dinner i make a maple bacon sage butter turkey for thanksgiving every year and um i been wanting to grow my own sage for that recipe um, for years now and so I finally decided to just do it and that's the thing is I mean buying herbs at the grocery store can be really expensive so growing them yourself is actually kind of cost effective so that's um, that's gonna be really fun to have for Thanksgiving and it's a little extra pretty because it is the purple and then this is a golden oregano. I'm having a little bit of like pest damage or fungus damage on it, but <laughs> girly girl's checking it out too. It's really beautiful. And I love that color contrasted with all the other um, colors. Again, you know, it's decorative as well as practical. So that's really nice. And I love to use oregano for all my kind of Italian recipes. Oregano is just such a good staple to have. Then I have this window box here, which is a little bit of a mix of things. I had lettuce that I actually cut back um, after this spring, but then it has totally refreshed because I left the roots in the window box. So that has come in back up, more zinnias. This is, I believe, um, Emerald Towers basil. So it's gonna get really um, like tall and kind of column shaped. More zinnias, these are all just the lily put. And then I still have pansies, even here in July, which is so wild. So um, yeah, they're still growing and looking really pretty. It's been such a weird, cool year, but I'm kind of shocked that I have pansies still. I've got that one there. And then over here, I've got another little red one. I put these in last fall and I'm definitely going to put them in again because they were really pretty over the winter in these window boxes. 
And the last thing is a creeping, um, not thyme, a creeping rosemary. Hopefully this will be a perennial. The sage, the oregano, the thyme, that'll all be a perennial. And I sometimes have trouble getting rosemary to winter over. I'm zone 7A, so it's kind of on the edge, but I'm hoping that it will. And it's, I think it looks really nice creeping over the edge of this window box. There's kind of like the look. I think it's really pretty. Then we have um, this container. I potted it up in a video. It's got the whirlwind scavola and an amazel basil, which I have been harvesting off like crazy. And it is just producing and producing. What an incredible plant, oh my gosh. And I'll just take a peek at the um, kufia in the hanging basket. I found these nice little um, hooks that uh, just on Amazon that you can just put on the edge of like your patio and they um, will hold a hanging baskets. So that's been really handy. Uh, I'll link those in the description. Um, but yeah, I have just basically kufia in there and then actually some, I can kind of see the vinca that's spilling out the bottom and it's, it's reaching down. Like you can touch it from being down in the garden, which is kind of crazy, but we get hummingbirds on this plant all the time. I've probably said it a million times now, but if you want hummingbirds in your garden, plant kufia. It is the hummingbird plant. I see hummingbirds on it every day and that's really what they come to. They basically just want to come to the kufia um, and they, they love it. And the bees love it too, all kinds of pollinators. So that's a really, I'll always have that in my garden. This hay rack fell. <laughs> I had to repair it. I've got to trim this. It, these are kind of few seasons old and they weren't the most expensive hay racks. So it fell little bit of a disaster but I still do have some more basil in here I forget I think this is a licorice basil um, and um, some Swiss chard so I'm gonna be adding some things to this container and definitely giving it a little makeover I'm not quite sure yet what I want to do maybe plant some fall things kind of waiting because we're sort of right about at that time then I have another hanging basket I got this really pretty garden meister um, fuchsia, some more kufia, there's euphorbia in there, some of these petunias. The petunias don't look awesome because we got rain and if you grow petunias you know that they always get really sad right after rain. But there's euphorbia in there too, a little hummingbird feeder. Um, I've been liking this hanging basket. I just, you know, love to have hanging baskets, more of the vinca growing down. Vinca is just such a fun one to have spilling out of any container um, and when you have them like it goes all the way down you can see how long it's getting it's super long just growing through the trees which are these are crepe myrtle trees which are starting to bloom and it's really nice because we're right up here in the tree canopy so we really get a beautiful view of the crepe myrtle and it's like this bright hot pink which you know me this is like one of my favorite colors so I absolutely love this tree and I keep it trimmed a little bit just so that we always have um, these flowers like right right at eyesight right here on the on the porch um, usually I wouldn't trim a crepe myrtle but I want to have the flowers <laughs> right where I can see them they're just starting so this show will get even more beautiful um, in a few maybe like in a week or two all right, then another hay rack. And so I have like two perennial hay racks with perennial herbs and then more like annual hay racks where I have, um, where you saw like the basils and stuff. Um, but this is orange mint, which is one of my favorite mints. I just think it's a really pretty like leaf form and it usually is a very healthy mint for me. I've been trimming it back. It is starting to grow off little shoots. <laughs> um, so I do keep an eye on it. I do trim it. Um, I'll probably come in here pretty soon and trim this because it's starting to get big. Chives. I use chives a ton. Anytime I make potatoes, I want to throw chives in. Oh my gosh, it smells so good just from touching it like that. It smells amazing. And then um, this is strawberry mint, which I love the scent of, but it's not as healthy. As you can see, I just cut back. I get really flowered and I just cut it back. And I'm wondering if I should treat it with like for fungus or something. You know, I don't want to if I treat it, then I'm not really gonna be able to use it much, but right now it's just not looking super healthy. You can see the difference between the orange mint. So a really pretty, interesting mint, a really beautiful scent, um, but I may switch it out next year just if it's not gonna do well. And another zinnia, and there's a zinnia in here. I pop these zinnias just in everywhere, <laughs> which is kind of fun. I like how they just kind of come up, and there's also a Swiss chard in everywhere. 
Then we have the green stock, which is doing well since I moved it. It definitely likes this location. Um, these are the bush, let's see, what were they called? Um, bush champion tomatoes. As you can see, we're getting bunches of tomatoes. The strawberries are putting off fruit. I do have some eucalyptus in here. This is the lemon gum. So that is really pretty. And then I have down here, baby blue. And up top I've got, um, you know, some of the other flowers. I just, yeah, I think it's really pretty. It's looking, starting to like fill out and look really nice. And what else do I have? I do actually have um, a cucumber here that's just put on flowers. So I'm curious to see if that's gonna flower because that would be um, super cool and it looks really healthy. I'm really excited about how healthy everything is looking in here. Like I've got a pepper that's starting to put on some flowers and yeah, I'm so interested in this, but it's really, I mean, this patio is full, full, full sun. So everything really gets like the sun it needs. The only things that aren't doing well are down here. Um, I did put in some squash and like, I, they must just not have enough room to grow. They're flowering, but like, that's not how squash is supposed to look like that is tiny. And, um, this petunia is kind of dying. So there's a few things that aren't looking amazing, but if you focus on the top, it looks really beautiful. And so that's what I'm trying to focus on. And then I have my last container, my banana plant, which I am obsessed with. This is the Grand, this is the Grand Nan banana. So stunning. It's getting so tall. I think it's about like, I would say like three feet now. Really beautiful. I planted licorice basil with it. These are a carpet mix um, Cosmos that are like that beautiful orange. There are some marigolds in here which haven't started blooming yet, but just look at the size of these leaves. I mean, they're just so gorgeous. It's like, it's so much fun. And I'm just growing them for fun. Like they're just- The thing I have is this raspberry plant, which I'm starting, which I'm not really sure, like this probably isn't a big enough container, but I'm gonna get it started. Um, and it's a yellow raspberry and should be yeah should be good i just got this um bare root and it's like starting to put on some growth and then maybe we'll mix it or move it into a grow bag or something um once it gets it. i've been all into experimenting with growing um different perennials and grow bags so i figure you know we'll just try to grow raspberry and see it should self-pollinate i don't have a second one um but that's another thing that maybe you know we'll see how that goes the only last thing i have is here on the side i have a little one of the little lemons that i started from a grocery store lemon just from the seeds out of grocery store lemon that has been a super fun little experiment to grow those lemons and they've been doing very very well um and yeah that is the, oh i forgot my bay leaf just have a little bay leaf in a container yeah, so this is kind of, you know, it, it is fun, it is decorative, um, but it's also really a garden for, um, you know, just for using in the kitchen and having herbs and things on hand. And then, you know, you throw in the banana um, and stuff just like for a little bit of fun. But I think next year I'm really interested in putting more like peppers and tomatoes into that green stock, just small varieties because it is um, not a huge growing space uh, so that we can really have like lots of kitchen things nice and close. Um, anyway, so that's a little impromptu tour of the patio. Thank you so, so much for watching. Um, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye-bye.